Former world champion Vladimir Kramnik is here. He's playing against the young talent Alexander Donchenko at the World Blitz 2019. He plays the English opening. Knight to f3, knight c6 and a3. If you think about it, Kramnik is just playing the Sicilian with white side. And Donchenko is kind of taken out of theory there. He puts his pawn on d5, so it's like an open Sicilian. Just if you imagine the moves e4, c5, knight f3, d6, it's just this position with opposite colors. And now Kramnik puts his queen on c2, which is kind of the best square for the queen. Bishop to e7, black is completing his development. b4, gaining space. So playing an opening with opposite color is a very good strategy. A6, stopping B5, the bishop comes out to B2, attacking the E5 pawn, which is defended. Bishop E2, and now black castles. Kramnik puts his knight on D2. It's also called like the hedgehog formation, but there the pawn is back on B3. Here, Kramnik has gained some more space with B4, and this is a very comfortable position, because white has ideas like knight E4, knight C5, his rook can go to C1. He can castle, put his rook to d1, try for the d4 break. Queen e8 is played. Maybe he wants his queen on f7. Kramnik. And he goes to g6. Ooh. He's putting pressure on the d3 pawn. But for now, it's well protected. Rook e1. Well, at some point when d4 comes and the e file opens up, the rook will be well placed. Rook a d8 and brings his other rook on c1. You can see how Kramnik is playing quickly. He's just used 5 seconds. This is all experience. You know, such structures are something that he's played many times. Knight to e4. Now, wants to go to c5. And many of these world-class players, former world champions, have so much experience in chess, have such great feel for the game, that they do not have to spend too much time on their moves. And they also trust their intuition a lot. Donchenko in deep thought for him pushing f5 is something he wants to do but that would weaken his e5 pawn he goes bishop to c8 now preempting the knight c5 jump hitting the bishop and the pawn so the bishop on c8 is now just out of the way it's not a square where it wants to be but it's out of the way knight to g3 played by Vladimir maybe knight h4 and knight f5 is on the cards Queen goes to h6. Donchenko trying his best to put his pieces on good logical squares. Queen b1 here. And now the queen can come to a1. Here maybe d4 later. Or even the exchange sacrifice of rook takes c6 must not be underestimated. Bishop comes to d6. Black has made his intentions clear. He supported the e5 pawn. He wants to go f5. Kramnik puts his rook on c4. Wow. Maybe he wants to double down the c file. f5 played. Or maybe the rook can swing over to h4. But what will the rook do there? Black is looking pretty good now. He's pushed his pawn to f5. You can see Kramnik now using the time. On the clock, he has still a minute advantage. And also notice his other hand, he is playing with a piece, a pawn there. Just sort of moving it around. That's what many top players like to do while thinking. Bishop goes back to f1. Maybe now rook d e8 makes a lot of sense. Just putting some support also later on e4 could become an idea but also f4 looks very tempting and that is what Donchenko does he pushes his pawn to f4 but in that he has weakened a square here he has weakened the e4 square the knight on g3 is very happy knight takes f4 and Kramnik is like well isn't the e5 pawn hanging suddenly the rook on e1 has now attacked the pawn and I think Donchenko simply missed it he could
could have taken with the e pawn here, but after knight e4, white is still better. But now he's just lost a pawn. I think it was either a miss in judgment or he just trusted that there would be something, some sort of compensation here. Kramnik is very happy. He's pawn up. But black has compensation to some extent because the d3 pawn is weak. It is being attacked. The queen is actively positioned. But you can see how Kramnik is moving with such great speed. Queen to f6, hitting the rook. Also looking at the f2 square. Maybe some knight h3 business. And then the f2 pawn would be hanging. So you have to play this carefully. And Kramnik plays queen e1. What a nice move. Defending e5 and also f2. Pawn up also in complete control here. But isn't the d3 pawn hanging there? With 16 seconds, Donchenko takes it. Now the material is equal after rook takes d3. And Kramnik notices that maybe, maybe the c7 pawn is hanging and he picks it up. Queen to d8, attacking the rook and also threatening rook d1. Which will lose the queen. So the only move is rook c1. He plays it. And now black has recovered his pawn once again. But this time the back rank is weak. And Kramnik can go rook d1. Hitting the queen. And then rook e8. So rook d1, queen f6, rook e8. Followed by rook d8 coming up at some point. White is winning there. But will Kramnik find it? No, he plays h3. He doesn't want any back rank issues. But this will allow Donchenko to come back in the game. But it's too complicated here. Uh, rook d3 is the best move. He plays it. He finds it. Excellent move by Alexander. But with 12 seconds, how many more accurate moves can you find? That remains the question. Meanwhile, Kramnik with 50 seconds has all the time in the world to come up with new dangerous plans here. He plays his knight to e4. The knight can now jump to g5. It can also go to c5 h6 is important stopping knight g5 but he goes rook d4 allowing knight g5 now knight f7 followed by rook e8 check is on the cards queen f6 played but that's a blunder because now rook takes c8 is hanging and kramnik takes it because after rook takes c8 rook e8 is a back rank mate and donchenko resigns there he loses on time but also his position is lost what convincing victory for the former world champion amazing play against a talented youngster